moving on to Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. Ortega, very dangerous sub artist. I was against Ortega in the last fight. Um, I forget who he was fighting. Yeah, Rodriguez. Was yes. That fight. Yes, yeah, Rodriguez. I was on Rodriguez for that fight. You were on Ortega. You made Ortega your haymaker, and you cashed yeah. out, buddy. You you cashed out on that fight because that was like plus three hundred something like that. It was ridiculous. And I'm going to be a fool and do the same thing. I'm going to say Brian Ortega is too old. Um, he's not going to get it done. The thing I do like about Diego Lopez though is this dude stays in shape all year. Um, I've been watching. I started what I. I've always liked the UFC, but I've never watched the Ultimate Fighter. So this is actually my first season watching the Ultimate Fighter. And if you've watched, I forget which which team he's on. Mm, I forget. But Diego Lopez is always in there with them. He's in like every episode. You'll see him in the background. This dude just stays ready all the time. He's going to be ready to go. Um, he, he's young. He's hungry. He looks for finishes, which I really like. He's not just a point fighter. He comes out fast. He's got heavy hands. He's got good takedowns when he uses it. We just saw Diego Lopez's last win was very impressive. He's at minus 142 right now, 67% of bets, 75% of money. Uh, I think we're going to have to be public on this one and go Diego Lopez as well. I just I think Diego Lopez is – I think last time we were talking about him, there were like the memes going around of that Diego Lopez is everybody's like favorite uh, lesbian fighter. <laughs> Just because of his looks, he he's still I I don't understand that haircut, but I know the dude can fight. So I'm gonna go with Diego Lopez. I'm gonna start putting some respect on his name. Uh, Bobby, where do you sit on this fight? I do put respect on Diego Lopez's name, and uh, I did call that he was gonna beat Sadiq Youssef in his last fight, which is very controversial because people are still. Uh, Riding Yusuf's dick without a license, acting like it's once again whatever fucking year he was, uh, you know, a, a guy in. It's it's not that year anymore. I don't know if it's 2019, 2020. Well, we, we, that's the sound of 2024 pulling your ass over for riding that dick. So, yeah, I called that for Diego Lopez. This fight, another fight. This is the beauty of good matchmaking that the UFC very rarely has on cards like this. Some quality matchmaking where every fight we're covering, you could make a very strong argument in favor of the, <coughs> excuse me, one individual over the other. This is no exception. Brian Ortega plus 120, Lopez minus 142 right now, as you said. Here's my biggest uh, X factors in this fight, right? Here's how I'm looking at this fight. Lopez, not much to work off of. He's ended fights in the UFC so fast. It's very hard to kind of glean much from his tape. Uh, his longest fight was Movzar Ivalev, which was his loss in the UFC. Uh, so a little bit can be seen from that. But, I mean, other than that, he, he's the better striker for sure. I, I really feel confident in saying Lopez is the better striker. Definitely the more powerful guy. Once again, Ortega is a volume-based guy. If he's going to get a KO, TKO, other than his uppercut over a washed Frankie Edgar, he's very much, if, uh, if he's going to take you out, it's going to be an accumulation type thing, uh, kind of like he did. I don't know if it was a TKO over Zombie. I've got to check that out right quick. But that's what he's, that's what he's known for. He's going to have some accumulation rather than that one-punch knockout. So, Lopez, power. He's got the one punch knockout. He's got the power. He's every shot. It's going to be, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. You're going to be visibly wobbled. And if he's all over you, like he was Yusuf, you're not going to make it. You're just not going to make it. You're not going to be able to recover fast enough unless your chin is made out of andamantium. Like it's not happening. So he did take, Ortega did take zombie to a decision, but he battered zombie battered him probably should have been a tko ko but once again he just doesn't have that dynamite like lopez does in his hands so i'm very worried if brian ortega keeps this standing because even though he got the round three sub over yair rodriguez man when i saw him on that takedown that led to the finish uh to the sub by arm triangle of yair he was getting lit up by yair rodriguez and granted, most of those shots Yair was able to land were primarily punches. And as far as his boxing and his punching, Yair Rodriguez is probably one of the most pillow-fisted guys on the <laughs> roster, women included, with just like his flailing, like 
hammer fist and everything, like just absolutely disgusting to look at with no <laughs> power behind them. It was still concerning because if you try to do that against Diego Lopez, you're getting your head caved in. And that is the most concerning thing because that is Brian Ortega's kryptonite is also his biggest strength. His biggest strength is grappling. His grappling really is top class, amazing, best in the world, Brazilian jiu-jitsu training under Henner Gracie, just able to find the sub from anywhere, primarily triangles. That's why his nickname's T-City, Triangle City, but he'll take whatever you give him. Almost ended Volk, uh, was the first guy to drag Volk into deep waters, had a massive mounted guillotine. I still to this day have no idea how Volk got out of that, no. but Brian Ortega was the guy to challenge him before anybody else and almost end that reign and put up a good fight. It was a great fight, and his striking has vastly improved from his fight against Max Holloway up until now. He showcased it in the aforementioned Korean zombie fight. But, man, it's tough. It's tough because I think Lopez is going to be smart enough to want to keep it standing. I think he is going to recognize that he does have that striking advantage. And Ortega is just still so hittable. Like, even though he has made massive strides in his defense and offense from a striking standpoint since that Holloway fight, and he did all the right things, taking time off to heal, take time off to work on his technique to get better and all that. He still has issues that just leave him fundamentally exposed. And it didn't come back to bite him like it did against Yair. Because once again, if Yair's not kicking you, if you take away his kicks, he's very pillow-fisted and he has no boxing. His boxing is absolutely disgusting and atrocious. And obviously, once again, on the mat, he's – clueless he's he's the guy who got taken down and just rode like a long hot pony and your mom on a saturday night by the ghost of frankie edgar and had no answer for it that was yeah rodriguez so i think lopez is going to realize that he should not engage in the grappling with ortega because as great as he is at grappling this is one of those levels to it type thing where if yeah. he wants to go to the mat with Ortega, it's going to be a huge mistake because he's going to quickly find out Ortega is that much better in that department. So at the beginning of this, I was on Ortega because Ortega is the dog right now on the money line. It's just every fight starts standing. He has the power. He has the vicious, like fast, like overwhelm you type setup. That's going to give Ortega problems because Ortega works best when he's able to set things up because his takedowns that's it i was talking about it's his kryptonite and it's his biggest uh strength also where it becomes a kryptonite instead of a strength is ortega is that classic bjj guy who hasn't really worked on his wrestling and his takedowns and his clinch to a great enough degree to be able to really capitalize on that superb jujitsu he's not really that gilbert burns who was able to, you know, work on some double and single legs and up against the cage clinch, clinch work to get you down to your to your butt to be able to use that grappling and everything. He kind of relies on you making a mistake, like he caught Cub Swanson in a guillotine based off Cub making just a little bit of a mistake. He could easily do that against Lopez. But I, I just the more I think about it, the the more I'm off Ortega because every fight starts standing and I think Lopez is going to be savvy to that. And I just think he's just got – his striking just too good compared to Ortega's. And I hope I don't regret it, but minus 142 for Lopez. I, I'm going to put the money on the KOTKO by Lopez to take the sting off at plus 180. I could see decision since it's only a three-round three round fight. I could see the decision, but the problem is – if it goes to decision, Ortega's going to win. So you're not going to win shit on Lopez by decision anyway. So if you're putting money on decision, you're going on the Ortega side of things. Sub, once again, if you're going by sub, you're putting it on the Ortega side of things. So I'm going Lopez, KO, TKO at plus 180 to kind of take the edge off the money line. better start listening to the better and green podcast you will not regret it trust me trust me trust me and hey i'm dean blandino welcome 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 to better and green eh? to better and green eh? to better 
going green, hey. This I need a cash out. That's what it's all about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover all spot from the bottom to the top, hey. Shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.